Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. South Africa's Meerkat radio telescope will be ready to start scientific observations by the end of next month, a feat that Science and Technology Minister Naledi Pandor has described as excellent progress. Keith Campbell is following the story and is here to tell us more. Hi Keith. Keith, um, South Africa has invested some 2.4 billion rand in the SKA and Meerkat telescopes. Can you elaborate on what, what this has entailed exactly and where the program is expected to be by your end? It's entailed quite a lot actually, an awful lot of hard work by a lot of people. Uh, this included the selection and uh, purchase of a site for the Meerkat radio telescope and for the core of the square kilometre array uh, in the Karoo region, uh, not far from the town of Carnarvon. It entailed the passing of legislation, the uh, Astronomy Advantage Act, uh, that's not its full title, but uh, giving, uh, creating a, a reserved area for radio uh, astronomy operations, uh, giving the authorities control over radio transmissions in, in, in telephone communications, that sort of thing in that region. It entailed the de design and development and construction of an engineering prototype called CAT-7, CAT for Karoo Array Telescope 7, because it, was, it is composed of seven dishes, uh, composite dishes. Uh, that was itself preceded by a prototype uh, di uh, composite dish called the XDM, which is erected at the Heart of Based Hook Reed Astronomy Observatory, west of Pretoria. Uh, so, and then of course, there's the design and the development of the Meerkat radio telescope array itself, and the erection of dishes for that, which uh, is now well underway. Uh, the construction of all the support infrastructure, the construction of a, an assembly shed uh, at the site to assemble the dishes, the construction of a data center to, uh, to process the data. Uh, construction of roads, uh, putting in of electricity, of uh, water articulation. A uh, huge amount of work has been <laughs> undertaken uh, uh, with, with, with that uh, program. Now, the next stage is to complete Meerkat and get it up and running. Uh, there are 20 dishes. By the end of this month, there should be 20 no, 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 probably more than 21 dishes because they're now erecting the dishes at a rate of about one a week. So uh, they should have more than 21 dishes up. Uh, 21 should be operational. 16 will certainly be fully operational and integrated. And the aim is that they can start scientific research by the end of this month with these uh, 16 dishes. Um, and then roll out until uh, finally next year they have uh, all 64 dishes of Meerkat up operational, integrated and functioning as a single instrument. Keith, what are some of the major challenges that have faced the project as a whole? Well, uh, the project has, I think, gone quite remarkably smoothly. Uh, the, as I say, originally uh, th they made use of composite dishes. That was a world first. Uh, they were designed and developed in South Africa. As I say, a composite dish was tested on the XDM, uh, and which is still functional. It, it, it now serves as an, as an ancillary dish uh, to the main dish at Hart Bay Sur. The CAT-7 dishes were composite dishes, but then they switched to metal dishes for the Meerkat. Uh, this was partially a design issue because they decided on a different configuration of dish for Meerkat, um, and it was a partially uh, cost issue. It turned out that uh, the uh, metal dishes would be uh, more affordable. Originally, it was assumed that the metal dishes would be more expensive, but uh, the fallen global commodity prices completely changed that, that perspective. Um, 
there have been some problems with uh, the production of the metal dishes, but uh, these have been overcome, and uh, they did cause a little bit of delay, but the delay is being overcome as of the end of uh, uh, last month. Uh, they were meant to have had uh, 21 dishes up, and they had 20 dishes up, so the they were nearly back on schedule, and they'll very soon be back on schedule. So the, the, uh, there have been uh, a few hiccups, but surprisingly few uh, in, in, in the course of the development of the program. That's good. Um, what is the involvement of some other African countries in the program? Right, well, of course, Meerkat is intended as a precursor to the International Square Kilometre Array which will be the biggest radio telescope when it's built. Meerkat is already the, no, no, soon will be, uh, the, by the end of this year, will be the biggest radio telescope array in the world. Uh, and uh, will be the, uh, will grow until it reaches the full size, as say 64 dishes next year, when it will uh, remain the biggest uh, array until it is incorporated into what's called SKA Fears 1. Uh, SKA Fears 1 will see the construction of 197 dishes uh, at the core site in South Africa. Uh, I have to, of course, remind everyone that South Africa is co-hosting the SKA with Australia, so there's a second core site in Australia. Now, later, the plan is to have an SKA Fears 2, uh, this will involve a variety. This will involve the development of uh, new antennas to cover different frequency ranges. Will also involve the setting up of outstations uh, beyond the core regions uh, in South Africa and Australia. And the idea is that outstations will be set up in eight African countries. Uh, there's Botswana. There is. Zambia, there's Mozambique, uh, Namibia, Kenya, Madagascar, Mauritius, Ghana. Uh, I, I think I've listed, listed them all. Uh, now, to prepare the way for this, the concept of the African Very Long Baseline Interferometry Network, or AVN, was created, involving the idea of converting large obsolete and no longer used telecommunications dishes into radio telescopes. This would allow these countries to develop expertise in radio astronomy before SKA Phase 2 came along. And uh, this program is now running uh, un under the uh, uh, leadership of SKA South Africa. Uh, the most advanced program is in Ghana, with a 32-meter dish at a place called Kuntunze, which is very nearly finished conversion, and they hope to start running tests within the next uh, uh, few weeks, actually. And they hope that it will be able to be declared operational by late this year. Uh, Ghana is the lead because it's halfway between South Africa and Europe, so it's ideally located for very long baseline interferometry observations involving the heart of Beersuk antenna dish, uh, a European dish, and then the Ghanaian one right between provides a perfect link. Uh, very long baseline interferometry means taking more than one radio telescope, which are a long way apart, pointing them at the same object, doing simultaneous observations. And then these observations are uh, integrated, merged later with special processing. The effect is to create the equivalent of a gigantic radio telescope by having two far apart looking at the, at the same thing. Um, and the other great thing about Ghana is radio telescope there can look both into the northern sky and into the southern sky. Uh, now, Ghana also benefited from having an institution, the Ghana Space Science and Technology Institute, which already existed. So the radio telescope can be 
put into this already existing organization. They already have people with knowledge and expertise in space, although not when the project started in, uh, in, uh, in astronomy. And they have a budget line, you know, for space. You know, when you've got a space budget line, it's a lot easier uh, to persuade your treasury to extend it to include something else than when you have no budget line at all for space or astronomy and you've got to persuade your treasury to create a totally new budget line. And the other African countries are in a position where they've got to create uh, institutions to run these radio telescopes and to create the budget lines to do it. Uh, the countries that are most advanced along the, the, this governance uh, process are Zambia, Kenya, and Madagascar. And it's likely that the next conversion project will be launched in Zambia. Z uh, conversion is not started until all the governance issues are set up and the money is assured. The complication in Zambia is that though the uh, telecommunications dish is obsolete and out of use, they built a modern technology telecommunications tower uh, right next to it. So that's got to be moved because the interference would make it utterly impossible uh, for the dish to function as a radio telescope. So they've got to get a budget to move the telecommunications tower. Uh, and that, uh, that process is underway at the moment. Uh, but they, they, they hope that they will be able to start conversion work in Zambia next year. Now, Botswana doesn't have an old obsolete telecommunications dish. It's not the only one of the eight countries in that position. So the program has been extended with the idea of building new dishes in these countries, which is the big advantage that they can, they can, that, that they can select an optimal site. Whereas with the conversions, the site's fixed. So if you've got urban encroachment in the site, you're stuck. Uh, so you're going to have more interference. Whereas if you can select a site, you can select a site with minimal interference. However, at the moment, there's no funding available for the construction of new dishes. So that's an issue that's being looked at at the moment. And uh, 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 hopefully there'll be a report to the uh, African SKA partner countries science ministers conference uh, in November this year about about how funding can be obtained for this program. Thank you, Keith. That's the second psych show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.